The following broadcast is intended for mature audiences. These are real people sharing very real, deeply personal experiences. This content may be considered triggering for others and for those who are sharing. The chat room is a privilege intended for discussions and sharing. You are not being asked to agree, but you are being asked to stay civil and refrain from personal attacks. Listener discretion is advised.
guess who's back? And feeling great. Well, at least I am. Welcome back to Am I Mental, a live podcast where people share stories about how mental health impacts life and how life impacts mental health. I'm your host, E, and with us, as always, we have Bexy. Hello. And we have C. Hello. C, as in COVID. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I can't help the corny jokes. So we said that we were going to have a discussion about medications and the importance of it with a guest. But that guest, like what happened two weeks ago, uh, they have friends coming into town that they haven't seen in like 10 years. Um, and with my luck, just the way it is, I mean, come on. I had a severe sinus infection on my birthday. That is a podcast day. C had covid and Bexy had a, a, one of the worst flare-ups that she's ever had. And it all landed on the same day. That's just how my luck works. Just the odds of having my podcast on a um, on my birthday is a little bit around 1 in 7. You know, because leap years, it shifts around a little bit. But roughly 1 in 7. Yeah. But he will be here next week. He said that he'll come hell or high water, he'll be here next week. And I just had to say, you know, with that kind of a promise... We'll have to push him off until next season because yeah, all of his friends are going to show up next week. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> That's just how shit rolls in my world. It always has. Mm. Um, so yeah, what I did want to talk about though was um, I had some weird side effects with my meds. Now last time I wasn't on any antidepressants or anti-anxiety. I was just, you know, my usual fucked up self. And I had to get on a Z pack, and I wound up with extreme um, insomnia. insomnia. And I wound up riding the herb garden, which I do believe I did share on this podcast uh, the first time yes, I decided you have. to get creative. So yeah. I was kind of looking forward. I was like, "Hey, I'm getting another Z pack. I wonder what I'm going to come up with this time." I didn't come up with shit. You know what happened? I got hit with insomnia really hard, and on top of that. It interfered with my antidepressant and my anti-anxiety to the point where it felt like I quit cold turkey. That is horrible. That's terrible. Now, in my family, we needle each other a lot. It's kind of how we show that we love each other. It's like, you know, we pick on those that we love. Um, right. My sister could be particularly harsh. And that's fine. I could be particularly harsh. We all could be particularly harsh. So I start my... Z pack on Thursday. It's five days. You know, six pills. You take two the first day, then one every day after that. Um, you talk about some powerful antibiotics. How many antibiotics do you know that could clear out a serious infection in five days? Mm, so, yeah. Um, to not be too disgusted, within an hour of taking it, I became a um, uh, a power washer. <laughs> so yeah. Oh my. Oh no! Yeah, and with Z packs, it's either you that happens or it doesn't. And for, yeah, oh, I'm with my gut. It happened, of course. Mm-hmm. But by Saturday, I'm now getting close to the middle of my regimen. My antidepressants aren't working. My anti-anxiety isn't working. So, um, if anybody's been on antidepressants for a long time and they quit cold turkey. You can only imagine how you feel a couple days later once it wears out of your system. I wanted to go and hide in my office and cry during the birthday party we threw for my um, my granddaughter. And it was a co- <laughs> also a co-birthday uh, party for me and my wife. Because my wife and I, our birthdays are six days apart. Her birthday was yesterday. You know? Oh. So, yeah. Um. And it was one friend of mine who came over that really helped to make my day and get me stable. He has always had that effect since I've known him. Um, absolutely great friend. And then I had to run my son, my son's girlfriend, not quite daughter-in-law, and my grandbaby uh, to their place. And my parents left at that time. When I came back, it was just my sister me, my wife, and my two kids. And um, I was just going to let it go because, yeah, she was being, she was a little bit harsh. But again, that's just how she's always been. 
you know? And for right. me, I mean, I love it 99% of the time. This happened to be the 1% of the time that it sucked. And I wound up being oh. just full out. I was like, I know I'm going to, I'm like, I'm going to appear weak in front of her. And I hate appearing weak in front of her. I really do. She's my little sister. I'm her big brother. I shouldn't be weak. Okay. You know what? That's a bullshit thing to say to yourself, but that's where I was. Yeah. Right. I was about to right. say, I call BS on that and you know better, but yeah, I, I get, you know, hit the, the headspace you were in. Yeah. It's what your brain tells you. Yep. And so I was like, you know, I, it was really rough. I at times wanted to go hide in the office and cry. It's like, you really hurt me today. Like, normally I'd be able to roll with it. And I know that you're, you mean it in just fun. You just mean it at, in jest. But today I was really f- emotionally fragile and vulnerable. And it really hurt. And she would apologize. She's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I did not mean to hurt you. I never meant to hurt you. And I know she never does. Mm-hmm. Oh, when she wants to hurt you, trust me. There is no mistake if she wants to hurt you. <laughs> she can skin you alive with just words. Like you will be checking your body and make sure you still have any skin left. Um, <laughs> a good way of putting it, and this was this comes from Robert Jordan. But it's a good way of putting it. She gives you a tongue lashing that goes up one side and tears down the other, and you have nothing left afterwards. Oh my goodness! But yeah, so she—I mean, we got in a huge hug, and we just we cried on each other's shoulders. And I mean, oh, she really God. is the—if I were to pick a single most important person in my life besides myself, because gee, if I wasn't around, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> exactly, it's her. You know, she Aww. knows me better than anybody. She's known me her whole life. I've known her for all but three and a half years of my life. Mm-hmm. Um, we were latchkey kids. So, you know, we were uh, pretty much inseparable. Yeah. yeah. So well, it we was have really a... good. It was a really good cry out. Um, and I think it was really good overall just to have that communication open. And yeah, that, right. uh, that ties into something that um may just said communication is key and we are allowed to set boundaries for just today that's brilliant may that is absolutely brilliant yes it is and may also says happy belated birthday mrs e (laughs) 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 yeah we went out to a, a place that okay so back when blockbuster video was a thing I know you Zoomers have no idea what that is. <laughs> Some of you might. <laughs> Just give you a hard time. But yeah, she used to work there. And this restaurant popped up right next door. Well, that restaurant's still there. You know, the Blockbuster's long gone. And we went right. there for her birthday dinner. And it was, oh my God. Like, literally, if their pizza, if they had actually bothered to season the crust, that was my own complaint was that the crust was unseasoned it would have been literally the best pizza I've ever had in my life wow the crust though was still very light very fluffy very airy like some of the best like as far as the qualities of crust go the best that you could get all they would need to have done was after it was done cooking was to brush it with a little bit of olive oil and maybe a little parmesan on it or even brush it with some olive oil and put a little like crushed garlic on it because it has a garlic pizza and then cook it on that's all they had. that they were that close to perfection. Wow. Wow. That, that sounds, sounds amazing <laughs> though. <laughs> yeah, it was amazing. Oh my god. And I had pizza for lunch, oh. for leftovers. Yes. Awesome. Oh, we have a question too. Yes. Okay, oh. we have a question from Kat. She says, I "Just wanted to know meds not to accept if the doctor wants to try." I know there's some that have bad side effects, especially for AD, for ADHD, potentially also antidepressants. And May says, cat, if XOR is the devil. So I will put a little caveat on May's reply there. Um, Effexor for me was the devil. It is the absolute perfect med for my wife. Every med is different because everybody's body chemistry is different. Right. Um, I'm more of a fan of newer antidepressants than older because they're more refined and those side effects are typically lesser. Um, And that goes the same with all meds. I mean, 
dear God, do not put someone on Ritalin for ADHD. Please no. don't. <laughs> but the meds that are derivatives of Ritalin, the more refined, the more specialized, by all means. Uh, my son was on Concerta, which was basically Ritalin extra, you know, extra refined. And he was on it for about three years of his life. That's all he needed it for. It was just to give himself that moment's hesitation to stop from being impulsive. And then he learned how to do it on his own. Nice. <laughs> May, really? She's the one. Well, I mean, my, my wife's the devil. So why wouldn't you expect, expect her to work for her? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> totally kidding. <laughs> She's a fireball. I will give her that. Um, yeah, for like for me, um, SSRIs and SNRIs are the devil for me. I had to go through a total third category. You know, I've been on Paxil. I've been on. God, what else have I been on? Well, Butrin. Shit, I can't remember them all anymore. But I've been on like three different, three or four different SSRIs. Effexor is an SNRI, and my reaction was so bad with it. They're like, "Yeah, we're not going to mess with even another SNRI because, no, it might kill you." <laughs> well, thank you. Wow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I got really lucky yeah. with my antidepressant, and the first one that they put me on was the right one for me. I wish. Man, that's so good. <laughs> you know, you, you I just, mean, you just made like half our listeners or more envious. Just to okay. you know. <laughs> probably, yes. and, and that's the thing. You know, it, I, I'm the one who has had so many issues getting shit figured out medically, but that that was no problem when when I needed when I needed the. The antidepressant, and I finally figured out. Now, of course, I'm on a second one, too, so. All right. So it needed a boost after a while, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, mine, I'm on the second yeah. lowest dose of uh, Cymbalta, and there's more doses to go, so I'm good. Now, during I the am... wintertime, there are times that I want to up it just a little bit. This year, I didn't need it so much because... I was too busy. I was too busy to <laughs> realize I was how depressed I was. <laughs> so, also, having a, also having a sinus infection from December until February might have a little bit to do with it. Um, but no, I'm good where I'm at with mine. <laughs> yeah, I take. Um, it's not the lowest dosage, but the next step up of of my antidepressant of Celexa. And I take that in the morning, and then at night, I take 50 milligrams of trazodone. Otherwise, I don't sleep. Yeah, I was going to say, that that's a knock-you-the-fuck-out drug, isn't oh, it? No. It, it is, but it's also an antidepressant. Oh. Nice. Now, the one thing to be aware of, and this is the one thing that a lot of psych... Especially if you, when you go to, like, um a more holistic kind of office where you have like a therapist and you have a psychiatrist and you have a doctor and they're all talking to each other. Uh, one of the things that they are very cautious about is if your depression is bad enough that they are almost scared to put you on an antidepressant because if your depression's really bad and you're, you know, feeling very suicidal, sometimes your depression is the only reason that you don't do it. Then they put you on an antidepressant and suddenly you have this energy to go ahead and go through with it. Right. And I wish that was a joke. But that is something that they're very, you know, conscientious about. And I'm glad that they are. Um, like, I know some people who were denied an antidepressant and were given anti-anxiety first to see, does the suicidal ideation go away or lessen with that? And then it's like, okay, it is lessening with that. Great. Now we can add an antidepressant. Okay. It's very smart. Yeah, it is. Because, I mean, the last thing you want to do is, like, here's your antidepressant. Oh, they killed themselves. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. The last well, thing damn you Damn it. <laughs> damn it. Now yeah. I'm not going to be able to go to Tahiti. I guess I'm just going to have to go to the Bahamas instead. I'm totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> That's not how... Most of the... Every doctor I've ever dealt with is in it because they love helping people and help healing. I've never actually run into a doctor that I could say that I felt they were in it for the money. It's a lot of work <laughs> to get there for the money. 
Oh, I can imagine. <laughs> and yeah, and also with antidepressants is that sometimes they could swing in the wrong direction and make you worse. Yeah. It's like oh, they, yeah. they could tell, okay, you are depressed. We don't know what chemical imbalance you have that's causing your depression. Sure, there are tests that can be done and labs that can be run to an extent, and they're expensive as fuck. Or they can go, let's try the minimal clinical dosage of this antidepressant and see how it goes. Okay, you got worse. So let's try the opposite end of the spectrum of uh, antidepressants and see how it goes. Okay, you're getting better. We're going the right way now. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a gamble. It's educated guesswork is what it is. All right. So Kat just said also, that's not a problem for me. That's good. But yeah, um, also with ADHD stuff, the only things I've ever done for ADHD is I was on, oh God, what's that called? Adderall XR. It's for extended release. Um, I was able to concentrate quite well on it. Um, it actually did a lot of good for me, but it had one particular side effect that I was like so against that I was like, no, mm -mm, not worth it for me. And it's not, it's a pride thing. (laughs) It's a part of me that I'm proud of. And it was changing something of me that I did not like. Um, Oh no. Also, I did try clonidine and there was one more. I can't remember what it was, but clonidine, it's good for reducing impulsiveness. Where when you have ADHD, I mean, you're fucking impulsive. You know, it's that whole thing of, hey, you want to go cow tipping? Yeah, let's go cow tipping. That sounds fun. Yeah. You don't think it through. You're just like, ooh, cool. Let's go cow tipping. <laughs> then you find out afterwards, yeah, those cows tend to die because you snap their necks when they fall. Oh. Fuck. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Or We yeah. did a bad thing. Yeah, we've done a bad... Fortunately, I've never gone cow tipping. Um, but yeah. I've ADHD. never done it either. Yeah, uh, the problem for me with clonidine was I took one and I zonked out for 12 hours. Like, oh my god. Yeah, you can't be impulsive when you're in a coma. Exactly. I mean, if they wanted to do that, they could have just dosed you on Benadryl. Right. Or like, here, here's your heroin. <laughs> heroin? No. Morphine? Okay, morphine's okay. Yeah, I will. Morphine. No, <laughs> I never tried it. Don't want to. I hope that I never have a surgery where I need it. As I've seen the level of pain that you have to be in to get morphine, and I don't want that level of pain. Mm-mm. No. It's bad. Fair enough. Um, let's see. I had an <laughs> uncle who he had a ruptured bowel, like just bowel perforation, and. He didn't realize what was wrong. He just had a really bad stomach ache and he was feeling really tired. And his then wife and, you know, my two cousins, his two daughters, were, you need to go to the hospital. He's like, no, I'll just go sleep it off and I still feel bad in the morning. We'll, I'll, you'll, you will take me to the hospital. And they said, if you could stop us from taking you to the hospital, you could stay the night. You could sleep and go tomorrow. And they drug his ass to the hospital. Had he not gone, he would have died in the sleep. Wow. As it was, they had to go in. They had to clean up a bunch of, you know, bowel leakage in your body cavity. And he went septic. And he was in a lot of pain. And they put him on morphine. And then, you know, one of the things that they have you do after you're done with um, the surgery, you know, is that they have to put a catheter in. And if it's a bowel kind of surgery, they also have to put a colostomy bag in. Because, yeah, your, oh, no. your stuff is not going to work for a while. Like, trying to right. get good luck peeing. That's a reflex that is numbed from the surgery and in trauma. But they want you to walk because it helps get things working again. Walking is one of the best things you can do for your digestion. So he is walking around the nurse's station. This is a tiny little hospital, you know, so it's just literally just walking in circles around this desk. He thought he was in Walmart shopping. <laughs> he was so high on oh. morphine. Uh, then I had a nephew who had really bad scoliosis where they had to do the titanium rods along the spine. In order to do that, they have to detach every single muscle that is connected the whole length of your spine. Oh. 
and then reattach it. It is a 12-hour surgery. Um, he was watching that clock. Every time oh. he could press the button, he did. He was in so much pain. That's... Wow. His back's perfectly straight now. But they're never taking out those rods because in order to take them out, guess what they would have to do? Do surgery again. Detach every single bus. Yeah. He was like, they're like, no, that's too invasive a surgery. You know, taking those rods out, that's just not going to happen. That's just too much work. Plus, would you really want to go through that pain again? Oh. What if your condition starts reversing again? Well, better, right. better off leaving them in. Don't want to get another surgery. Right. And uh, so Kat was just saying, I was just hoping to avoid spending months and months trying everything for 30 days. And there's been mention of some awful things. Yeah. Some meds, like uh, when I was on Effexor, I was on it for two days. That was it. When the second day was far worse than the first day, I quit. And my doctor was like, yeah, do it. no, don't don't take him again. God, no, don't take it again. <laughs> um, but for me, my doctor, he was along the lines of, let's give things one to two weeks to decide. So it wasn't like the full 30 days. It was like 14-day trial. Two-week trial, woo! <laughs> okay. Oh, son of a bitch. Nightmare's here. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Nightmare! Um, so yeah, no. so yeah. Um, my antibiotics—they cleaned up my um, sinus infection quite well, but man, did it screw with my antidepressant! Oh my god! So yeah, it was a good little reminder as to why I'm on my antidepressant because Jesus, I don't like the old me. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. Um, Sometimes you need those reminders. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh yeah, this can happen. <laughs> More like, oh yeah, <laughs> this could happen. <laughs> yep. Oh my goodness. Yep. Just to be honest about it. <laughs> oh. Uh, Kat just asked me, did I tell my doctor? Um, I'm in between doctors right now, so... No. <laughs> Plus, it was only a five-day thing. I, I was like, you know what? I made it three days at that point. What's another two days? And I'm now... Ah, let's see. My last dose was Monday. Or Tuesday, Wednesday. So I'm three days away from it now, and I'm fine. And I'm nice and as balanced as my, uh, <laughs> my duloxetine is going to get me. <laughs> but I did find a really Good. awesome place where I could get my deloxetine for way fucking cheaper than I'm paying with my copay. That's awesome. Oh. All right, so I'm not big on the advertising stuff, but you know what? This is just too good a thing to ignore. Mark Cuban. I'm sure a lot of people know who that is. Mm-hmm. Shark Tank, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, entrepreneur. Rich is all fucking hell. Well... He's been saying for years, you know, like everybody else, the cost of medications are too high. The cost of medications are too high. And he went, look, either you could complain about it or you could do something about it. And I did some research. I could do something about it. You see, with the way that it works right now is that you have these brokers that sit between the pharmacies that produce the meds, the insurance, and the doctors. And these guys mark shit up. Okay. Now, because of laws and regulations, this is why... Uh, okay, I'm going to get a little political here because it, it, it's, it has to be mentioned here. Um, I'm a firm believer that the government doesn't do anything right but to make things worse. They're the ones that will break your knees, hand you a pair of crutches and say, you should thank me because without me you wouldn't be able to get around with those, without those crutches. Um, there is a legitimate need for government. I'm not going to say that there isn't. But our government and a lot of governments, all the governments that I in the world, overreach. And where they overreach, things go bad. Well, they've meddled heavily, heavily in trying to do the whole regulating of the pharmaceutical stuff. And as we know, our med prices are fucking atrocious compared to the rest oh, of the yeah. world. Like, you could go to Canada for the same insulin, same exact brand, manufacturer, 
lots, everything. And get it for dirt cheap in Canada, but spend an arm and a leg with, with through your copay to get it here in America. And if you want to use insurance, you have to go through all this crap. Mark Cuban is avoiding it all. He said, just cut them all out. He's going straight to the supplies, adding 15% markup and reselling it. There is one particular med that's used for oncology, you know, cancer med. He sells a 30-day supply for under $100, and you don't need insurance. That same 30-day supply, with insurance, going through that whole fucked system, your copay is just shy of $3,000. Oh, gosh, no. And he's paying at cost plus 15% to sell it to you. Because he's in it to make money. Yet still saves a fuckload of money. My duloxetine, a 30-day supply, eight bucks. You know how much it was for my copay as a generic through my pharmacy with what? my insurance? 25. Eight bucks versus 25. Wow. Yeah. They don't have a ton of meds right now. They are starting to roll it out right now they start with 100 meds and it's, it's a brand new thing mark cuban's goal is to start making the uh the generics himself to cut the costs even further the private sector is fixing what the government broke in this regard okay this is one example there could be other examples where the government actually did do better i'm not aware of them but there could be i'll admit that and I don't want really to be too political, but this here, this affects my mental health mm-hmm. and affects the mental health of a lot of people. My wife's effects are four dollars and fifty cents for a thirty day supply. How versus the thirty dollars she's paying now? Thirty dollars isn't a lot, but saving twenty five, thirty bucks a month, that adds up fast. Yeah, it does. Right. That's gas money. Exactly. That's gas money to get me from pump one to pump two. Yeah! Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I just, I saw the article about it, and I was like, let's just take a peek. And I started looking through some of the meds that were on there, and, like, my jaw hit the floor. It comes through the mail. Mail order drugs is nothing new. We've been doing it for uh, for decades now. Mm-hmm. It's as safe and secure as, you know, the mail. So, you know, whatevs. It comes in a discreet packaging, so it's not like it's advertising. Here's your boner pills, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's the little blue box. <laughs> oh, okay. Do no, they I... make anti-murder boob pills? Because those are me. <laughs> oh, shrink the booba. <laughs> the boobalas. Make, <laughs> make them booba less. <laughs> yes. Oh lord! <laughs> Let's see if I can find the name of that site. I, uh, I have to look at my history here. Uh, Mark Cuban Drug Company, costplusdrugs.com. dot com. Okay. So here it is: Emitinib, generic for Gleevec. It's an oncology drug. Retail price: two thousand five hundred two dollars fifty cents. His price, $17.10. Same fucking wow. med from the same fucking manufacturer. Wow. That is, that's so terrible. So fucked up. Fluoxetine, generic for Prozac. Retail price, twenty two ninety four. His price, $3.90. Wow. Those brokers mark shit up a lot. I mean, you're marking up a 30-day supply of that cost, after adding on 15%, $17.10, to sell to to the people who need it most for for $2,500 for a 30-day supply. And you know who pockets that money? That middleman. Not the insurance companies. Not even the pharmacy, the, the pharmacology the company that made the damn thing. It's the middleman. Yeah. I'm wow. not the 
I'm I'm not the biggest Mark Cuban fan, but in this, holy shit, thank you. Seriously, if you could find a way to make money while saving people money, by all means, do it. Please. And I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's meds. I don't care if it's dildos. I don't care what it is. If you're saving people money and you're making money at the same time, do it. But Jesus, for cancer drugs, just, yeah, I mean, cats had the holy shit kind of emoji. May, you know, for cancer drugs, bless this guy. Seriously, thank yeah. you, Mark Cuban. Yeah, that's that's an amazing thing. Like, if, if I met him in person. person, if I met him in person, I would actually give him a hug for that. Because one in four people are going to get cancer. That means every time yeah. we have a guest on one of us, odds are going to have cancer. I think it's going to well, be me, to be honest. I get that kind of luck. Um, hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have too much already. Yeah, well. <laughs> Nightmare's all the same. Greed. Greed's not necessarily a bad thing. Greed is what kept the humans alive. It's called self-interest. Yeah. You're just giving it a bad name. Mutual self-interest is awesome. Hey, I have this. I'm like, hey, I have six apples. And you're like, hey, I have two dozen eggs. Well, I only really want three apples. Well, I only really want a dozen eggs. Trade you three apples for a dozen eggs. Okay, we both benefit. Mutual self-interest. Exactly. And there's a big, big difference between having, being, having the self-interest and, and and then um, you know people I think often confuse it with um, being self-centered. Yeah, man, we had discussions about that. I can't hear it now. Oh. Turn on my AC. It's hot in here. It's getting hot in here. So take so off. take off all your clothes. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently winter's over in the, in my neck of the woods because I have the AC on now. Wow. Well, it's 70 some degrees here and I love that. <laughs> it's nice weather. Mm-hmm. Let's see what the what the forecast says. Oh. Yeah, there's a promise. The it says I promise the stars give zero fucks. It is sixty four degrees right now. <laughs> I have the low of forty five and a high of seventy six. I used to go camping in colder oh. than forty five. Okay. I have a high of seventy two, a low of forty three. It is currently fifty seven degrees and clear. And my forecast says it's a fine night, but it could be better. You could be getting a hand job from a California burrito. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fuck that yeah. burrito. Yeah, that's the point. <laughs> Meanwhile, Kat <laughs> said it was 94 there, where May is it was 72 degrees. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, I don't want to talk about climate change really don't (laughs) I have friends on all sides of this one so let's just keep it that way (laughs) yeah Uh, so yeah my mental health took a major serious beating recently but much better now Mm -hmm. Uh, the company I work for has been fantastic um I didn't get to go to Ohio like I was supposed to because, well, I got put on the, you don't get to fly because of medical reasons. So that was fun. You're not missing much. I missed Uh, an open bar for three hours. You you missed the (laughs) hell is real sign and grandpa's cheese barn. Trust me. (laughs) I was just going to be in Columbus for God, two nights and two days. Yeah. And, of course, one of those nights, uh, yeah, I'd go out, get enough land, check into the hotel, walk a block to the restaurant, free food, 
an open bar, all pay, you know, free drinks for three hours. Yeah. Well, I'm sending you a meme that, uh, oh, wait. Oh, where, where'd it go? Where'd the meme go? <laughs> May, let's yeah, talk about how punks of Tony Phil is literally always wrong. Look, I'm not blaming Phil. I'm blaming the people that interpret for Phil. I think they're stupid. <laughs> yeah, Phil needs some new interpreters. Phil but don't give a this, shit. <laughs> this is this is the thing. Driving through Ohio, be like corn, 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 corn. Hell is real. Corn, corn, corn. Grandpa's cheese barn. Corn, corn, corn and soybeans. Corn, corn. And the the thing is, it's so true. It's not even funny. Those signs. They exist. Hell is real and Grandpa's Cheese Barn, those are those are two real things in Ohio. <laughs> I've personally been to Grandpa's Cheese Barn. Oh god, that sounds dirty. <laughs> are you sure it was Grandpa's Cheese Barn and not Uncle uh was it Uncle Touchy's uh tickle maze? <laughs> Oh no! I'm oh no! Sure. <laughs> um. Okay. So, did you? So there was a. It turns out that Nebraska, it isn't all just flat and corn. <laughs> You're still laughing over that? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's had some incredible ebidals. <laughs> and he has to yes. say it wrong on purpose. I'm sorry. Hey, you know it's what? Okay. If that's what's keeping you from being in agony, by all means. <laughs> like, seriously, if you had the choice between agony and, you know, learning to fly, <laughs> Tom Petty style. Getting lit. I'm learning to fly. But I ain't got wings. Yeah, I'd take flying too. I'm free. Free balling. Um, but it turns out that Nebraska, there's a big chunk of Nebraska that is one of the 15 most empty places in the United States. There's literally like nothing there. As far as population goes, like the size of it is like New York and Philadelphia put together with a population of about 5,000 people. Wow. 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 <laughs> yeah. California has got on the list twice. Like people go, wait, but California is like the most populated state in the union. Yeah, there's 35 million people and 25 million of them live in L.A., <laughs> Let's just throw that out there now. And then you have another four to five million in San Diego, another three to four million in the Bay Area. So you got about a million or so scattered across the rest of the third largest state in the Union. Do you think anybody lives in the Mojave? Fuck no. That's a good chunk of Southern California. You think anybody lives in the northeastern part of California where there's literally nothing but lava tubes and rattlesnakes? Fuck no. Oh yeah, I want to go live in the in the lava tubes with the rattlesnakes. Yeah. Go live your life as a snake. I wouldn't be too upset to be in life as a snake. As long as I'm a king snake. <laughs> Cat was dying about you laughing. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> I can't help it. It just hit me the the right way, apparently. Uh, May was saying we should have Backyard Bird Day because I think they're legit better than the groundhogs at determining seasons at this point. Yeah, here in this, in where we're at, magpies. When you see the magpies, winter's over. I'm seeing magpies. Mm -hmm. Those fuckers are the first things cool. to leave and they're the first ones back. I got uh, I got questioned about what I was doing because I found uh, found a package of hot dog buns that had been opened and but they had gone stale. So I took them outside and I was, you know, tossing 
tossing chunks of it all over my front yard and my neighbor's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm attempting to create a murder. Of crows. I wanted all the crows to come to my yard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so where I live, um, we have turkey. We have unbelievable numbers of wild turkey. Like, literally, their species is, like, their, their name is literally wild turkey. Like the alcohol. And we have fuckloads of turkey. If you went outside with bread, start throwing it around, people would be like, oh, cool, you're pre-stuffing the turkeys. That's, that's the joke here. There are so many goddamn turkeys. And we have wild peafowl. Oh, really? Yeah, we have tons of wild peafowl, too. There's a whole riverbed oh, that's just loaded with uh, uh, peacocks and peahens. I would love to see that. It's so pretty. They're assholes. <laughs> I'm going to lie. When they're wild, they're assholes. Mm. Well, they're domesticated. They're all right. When they're wild, they're assholes. Of course, I think that it's still that nature gave the males the weirdest flex in the world. I have this gigantic tail that weighs me down, makes it hard for me to fly, and when I'm strutting my stuff, I can't see shit behind me, making me very easy prey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the kind of genes you want to pass on. <laughs> <laughs> for the males, yes. So I look at my attractive plumage. So may just say my bird bath and feeders are bumping all day long in the Sacramental Valley. That's funny because when Kiss came to town, they call us Sacramental. Because <laughs> we're out of our minds here. Fair enough. We have finches all year round, and um, we already have one nest that yeah, we had three sets of uh, fledglings from last year. Already seeing it being scoped out again this year, and I also have located two other places where I think they're going to be making nests soon. You know how I know that I think they're going to be making nests soon? Because of all the bird shit in the one spot on the on the ground below it that happened last time too before nests were built. You just get all it's like it's like why is this one spot on my patio the communal toilet for the birds? Because <laughs> they live above it. Or they're about to live there. Well, I have cardinals and blue jays. Buster. Ooh. Blue jays are beautiful. I've never seen a cardinal in real life. I have cardinals and blue jays. I fucking and hate blue jays. And woodpeckers. Blue jays are mean as fuck. And they don't even have a nice cr uh, cry. They have that sass. Um, oh, and I, I have mockingbirds, too. We have mockingbirds. We don't have cardinals here. Um, but we do have the blue jays. We have robins. We have magpies. Of robins and ravens and crows. We have crows, but no ravens. Mm. Our magpies are fucking big. I have a friend in Australia who has um, pink and gray galahs and king parrots and all of these other just gorgeous birds that just fly up on his um, on his veranda. So he sets out feed for them and he feeds the magpies and he hand feeds some golden possums I mean I'm like what are you freaking Ooh. the Australian Cinderella he's Cinderella with, with the birds and the animals around him say, golden swear. possums right there that's Beautiful. Australia yeah okay so if you haven't seen him um oh god damn it what was the name of that bird ah it was a tiktok guy he has this it's a red headed or like a ruby-throated uh, hummingbird. That's what it's actually called. It's a ruby oh my god, oh my god. Oh, okay. I, know the, I know the bird you're talking about. That comes up every like, hey. day. Yes. He's like, hey. That is so cool. You want to take a chill? And he just sits on his finger and feeds. He's been going there for two years. Yeah. Yeah. Those birds actually uh, spend their summers in my hometown. Where I'm at here in the Sacramento Valley. They pass through during the fall and the spring. The winters are too cold and the summers are too hot. But we do have them come through, so we do have a feeder that we put out for a little while. My parents, Aww. their place gets mobbed by <laughs> ruby-throated uh, hummingbirds. Also, my hometown has chickadees. Chickadees, they don't mind snow. They don't 
Yeah, like they were there. Oh, birds flock, you know, south for the winter. Not these fuckers. They stick around all year long. You'll find them flying around mm-hmm. in snowstorms. Cool little shits, though. I tell you that. <laughs> Seems like it. Now, <laughs> of all the birds that are out there, the bird that I want more than any as a pet is a European starlet. I heard one. Uh, it turns out that they are very. They 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 bond with humans. They love people. They love being around you. Um, they learn super fast, and they are everything that parrots should be as far as mimicry goes. They could learn R two D two in just a couple of hours, if that. Um, if I had. I, if I had to have a bird, if I the one bird I want is a great eared nightjar. Great eared nightjar? That doesn't even sound like a bird. Oh, it's a dragon bird. Yes, it is. Ooh. Look at this precious baby. They look like little dragons. They're cool as fuck, and I want one. Another really good bird if you want one that's very social, intelligent, chatty, and just loves to be around you. Minor birds. Pretty cool bird that I would like. Like It's just a dream, but like I would love to get a liar bird just so I can hear them mimic everything. <laughs> the ones that can mimic chainsaws. <laughs> yeah, and car alarms, yep. and camera shutters. Mm -hmm. wow that would be totally cool (laughs) Kat was talking about birds that scream at her if she doesn't get the peanuts out early enough (laughs) so May do you actually have a hummingbird that visits all winter long because if you do I might have to start leaving out a winter feeder That is not a bird. That is a dragon. Like, seriously. It's a feathered dragon. Yes, it is. It's toothless, covered in feathers. <laughs> it is. Oh, wow. That is adorable. I mean, it, it, it's such a pretty burb. I'm dropping it. In, I'm dropping a couple pictures in the Discord so everybody else can see the burb I'm talking about. Zaburb. I guess I'll, uh, I'll throw that in the art exhibit because burbs are art, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. So are some memes like the 23 and me of R2D2. 23% oh my God, that's so toaster, funny. 18% camcorder, 26% trash can, 4% hubcap, 3% laser pointer, 12% Duracell battery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and I can see every one of those too. Yep. Of course, I wouldn't trust Cat with a bird. <laughs> okay. It'd be like trusting a ferret with a bird. You, you, some uh, species yeah. you just don't mix. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to talk about. You guys got anything? Like how? No. How's your mental health been through your illnesses? Um. Well, I guess you know I've had some 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 rough days. Um. I had I had one day where I freaking all I did all day long was cry. How I even. Aww. I even, I I mean, I was, I was having in such a, such a bad time and I was talking to, to Nightmare about it and I'm video chatting with him and bawling all over the place and I'm just like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'd say that it hit you. (laughs) Uh, Gosh. It was, it was, I had, you know. 
it it, wow. it was a, a bad couple of days but then you know i i uh you know some things happened and i was like okay i understand my crazy episode now <laughs> it just was a a a shit storm of things happening and and mentally i was just like not ready for all of it and it was just too much for for a day or so and so I took a day did the whole self-care thing and felt a hell of a lot better good I I mean I, I I can't stress enough how helpful it's been I I made myself a self-care box and I recommend that everybody do it and you fill it up with stuff that helps you when you're stressed and you're anxious and, and everything like that. And for me, it's all those, it's, it's, it's like the girly bath bombs, bubble bath, face, face mask things. And, you know, I get too overstressed and I can go run a hot bath and pour something in it that smells amazing and lay back and soak and do the whole face mask on my face thing. And, by the end of the bath, I'm feeling a whole lot better about everything. Nice. Good. It's wonderful. Self-care is important. It really is. Especially when you're not feeling well. Yeah. Yes. And don't you forget it. Very, especially when you're not feeling well. And I mean, you know, that's the thing. Um, you know, I can't imagine how I would have been feeling if I wasn't on my meds when I was having these, I, I, that could be potentially disastrous because I know how bad I was feeling and that's medicated. If I wasn't medicated, it could have been a lot worse. Well, I'm glad it wasn't a lot worse. Same. (laughs) How about you C? I mean, you got COVID. Been... You got the vid, man. <laughs> yes, the vid. The Rona. I'd say, it's been all... I'd say it's been all right, other than maybe, like, irritation with people. Like, just getting very snappy with them very fast. Uh, other than Sorry. that. Sorry, jeez. <laughs> other than that, it's been all right. That's good. Yeah, I mean, I get it. And when you're not feeling well, I get snappy when I'm not feeling well. Not that I'm not snappy to begin with, but I actually mean it when I'm not feeling well, at least at the moment. Afterwards, I realized I was just being an ass and I feel bad about it. But at that moment, man, I tell you what. (laughs) Wow, I'm just looking at our stats. We're spreading again. Australia and (laughs) India are now tied for number two for countries that listen to us the most. Okay. United Kingdom, New Zealand, and Pakistan are tied for fourth. Or s- yeah, fourth. And then after that, we have Canada, Finland, Poland, Ireland, Russia, and Vietnam. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. And it was crazy. The month of February was one of our best months that we've ever had. Nice. Or not the month of February. Sorry, the month of the end, uh, like all of January, and a good and the beginning of February, we've been really high on listeners. So everybody that's listening, that's new, thank you. Um, and welcome. Yeah, and my mental diet. Listen now. Sign in with a free account. Join our chat. We'd love to have you. And you in Auckland, New Zealand. Yes, you. I'm giving you that. <laughs> it's 1 p.m. Oh, well, let's see. Actually, it's almost 2 p.m. your time on Friday. If you're listening live, dude, join us. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, next week is going to be our season finale. And then we're hey. going to take a few weeks off. And this time, really, really, really going to try to schedule out the whole season. Because I'd rather have that wait list that we can grab off of. <laughs> As opposed to where we've been the last couple seasons. We've been, yeah. 
I've been struggling a bit, so I haven't focused so heavily on the scheduling. But yeah, I'm feeling really renewed after kicking the shit out of the sinus infection. Um, I have a commitment for an Australian guest, which is going to be awesome. I've told some. Mm-hmm. Of their, I've told about some of their antics. I think on the air at least once. <laughs> if a hickeyed forehead comes to mind, yes, it's that person. <laughs> Not the one that had the hickey, the one that gave the hickey. Um, they're one of my best friends that I've ever had. Uh, they're they're a ride or die. Um, I'm very blessed to have so many of these people in my life. Uh, like uh, the person that's kind of taken over the webmastering for us. Uh, was a ride or die throughout high school. And we had a little falling out, and things are coming around again. You know, we're we're thick as thieves again. Um, not allowed to let it go this long again. We went years without talking. We went at least eight years, wow. of which I found out all but two weeks of that. They felt so guilty about it; they were afraid to come back and say anything. So I learned my lesson there. Wait two weeks ago. Did you have your Snickers bar yet? Are you okay now? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I want them on the show. They've been through a lot, too. Um, We actually kind of discussed a topic that I think would be really appreciated. Um, I'll tell you guys off the air. But I think it's something that... it's, It's something we've talked about before on this podcast. More than once. Or at least alluded to, touched upon, but never as direct as what this person would be able to say. And yeah, uh, for mental health reasons, you know, definitely want it on the air, definitely want her on the show. If she doesn't feel comfortable talking about it, I'm not going to pressure her into it too hard. I mean, I got to at least bring it up. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) I'm I'm running a podcast. I kind of need to be like, yo, you ever want to talk about this? <laughs> and we all know that have been on the show, you know, that have done episodes. It's very cathartic. Oh, yes. It definitely is. Oh, no. May wants to come on next week? No, 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 May. You're not coming. I'm kidding. Of course you're coming on. You want on, <laughs> you're on. Wait, what? Hold up. Huh? What? I'm just reading through the comments here. Yeah, I know I was too, and then I was out of, I was out of place. I think, uh, May was saying we're never ourselves when we're hangry. When you were talking about, hey, have you had your Snickers bar yet? Oh, that's true. <laughs> but there was something about welcome. Uh, we welcome engagement world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I because th- you were talking about, um, you yeah. know, the new that New-Zealand. are popping up. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Like, I mean. It is awesome just seeing where we've been listened to and where we're consistently listened to. Like, ever since we got on GeoSavin, we've been in India. And we've had listeners every... It hasn't fallen off since. We have regular listeners in India. I think that's cool. I think that's amazing. I'd love to get them on the show. I know it's also like, you know, freaking five in the morning, six in the morning when we go on the air. I mean, we did have someone in, you know, Ireland come on, and it was 2 a.m. for them, so no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, and if this podcast were to start kicking off where we could actually, uh, I could afford to, like, not have to work, then we could always do pre-recorded episodes for people that, like, you know, okay, shit, I gotta get up at 4 in the morning so we could at least get this episode recorded because they're gonna be in bed when we go live, and we'll just play the recording, and there's not going to be the Q and A session in the chat, but we can discuss what's going, what they talk about, you know, while we play it. It was just it's an idea I'm kicking around. Of course, that is way that's that's a pipe dream at this point. It's like I would love right. to do that, but I just I don't see that happening anytime soon. I doubt we're going to get as big as the Joe Rogan experience. With oh man, he's been getting been run through the ringer. But he's coming out on the he's coming out of it pretty good in the um but no we're not that big we're not as big as like 
some of those podcasts that are out there that are just like, Jesus, do you have how many millions that you, listeners? We haven't mm-hmm. even hit a thousand listeners on an episode. We've tipped a hundred before. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm pretty happy about that. Oh, cat. Damn it. Headache is back tonight. Uh... Had a shingles vaccine Tuesday. And that's one of the possible side effects, but only at night. How many nights? Grrr. Oh, cat. Honestly, oh. headaches better than shingles as long as it's not nightly headaches for the rest of your life. In that case, I think I might take the shingles. And no, May is absolutely right when she said that we are not ourselves when we're hangry. Dear God, no. Well, Kat, based on your comment there is not as bad tonight so far. I just hate, hate headaches. I have never met someone that went, oh, fuck yeah, headache! Ugh! Give me that frying pan and start bashing it on shit. <laughs> <laughs> The cat's saying shingles are horrible. And no. See, I don't know. I haven't had shingles. I definitely have the virus for it because I did have chicken pox. I do plan on getting the vaccine so I don't ever have to break out with shingles. I've heard about shingles. Uh, uh-uh. Mm-mm. I'd rather only ever associate shingles with the shit that's on top of my roof. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and read that. That's awesome. That that is amazing. I'm apologetic when I'm sick and homicidal when I'm hung angry. That's my sex from. <laughs> I swear, I need a shirt that says "I'm sorry for what I said to you when I was hungry." Seriously. And as a uh, borderline diabetic, the shit I say when I'm when I'm hangry, when I'm hungry, there is no choice but anger. None. Whatsoever, I am just angry. Ugh, and it sucks because I don't like being angry. I don't like being angry. I don't want to be an angry person. Hulk smash! Here, E, have a sandwich. No, it's not just Hulk smash. Hulk's gonna smash your head in and then eat the brains. <laughs> Ugh! Hey, Zombie Hulk! No! <laughs> yeah, if you guys hear sound effects and stuff in the background, wife is mm-hmm. working extra late tonight, so Mr. Man is hanging out in the office during podcast. I I thought I heard him at one point in time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, daughter is one of. Wife's friends came over, picked up daughter to take daughter to um, Girl Scouts. Aww. Now, here's a question with Zombie Hulk. How can you tell the difference between regular Hulk and Zombie Hulk? They're both green. Zombie Hulk is green and rotting. Well, that hybrid Hulk with Mark Ruffalo already looks like he's rotting. Sorry, Mark, but I don't yeah. like you. <laughs> Edward Norton was a better Hulk. By far. <laughs> At least he looked angry. Probably because he was angry. <laughs> uh... Edward Norton just looks angry. Yes, he does. He just looks angry, which is why he was absolutely perfect for Fight Club, the Incredible Hulk, yes, and American History X. Yes! Oh my god, I love those. Those are excellent movies. And yes, the curb stomping scene is absolutely disturbing as fuck. Yes, it is. I'm talking like disturbing on a level of it's worse than Kathy Bates and Misery hobbling that dude. Or the knife fight with the German dude in Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Ooh, god, that one fucked with me. Mm, that was that was rough. Like I, I understand that realism is important, but dear God. Hmm. 
And C's giving us that look like, what? <laughs> um, the Nazi won the knife fight and very slowly plunged the knife into the guy's chest. And waited until he stopped breathing before he walked away. And you, the viewer, were forced to watch the entire thing. Yes. And you could see the desperation in the guy's eyes as the knife was coming down on his own chest. It was just... Yeah. Horrific. Yeah. <laughs> wow, yeah. I just got the sh- chills from that. That's... that's I mean... Mm. Special effects, 10-10. That was amazing. How they didn't actually wind up killing a person for that scene, I... <laughs> mm. Are they talking shit about my little boy? He was a little asshole this morning. I was ready to put him up for sale. Five bucks. I'd pay. I'd never get rid of my kids. I love them too much. So yeah, next week is actually the... Yeah, like I said, it was the season finale. I think that the med discussion for the first season finale is actually fucking fantastic. I think that's yeah. a good way to end the season. A, a great way to end the season. A conversation that's two years too late. But better late than never. Um, right. Yeah, and there's some exciting mm-hmm. things that are in the works right now for the next season and beyond. Like for the next year or longer. Mm-hmm. Um, I talked a little bit to Bexy and C about them. Are you guys a little excited? Oh yeah, I am. Yeah. Definitely. Um I'll just put it this way, it's going to help with our guest issue when we are running short on guests. I don't think we're going to have much of an issue with that with what's potentially brewing here. Um it's looking really good so far. Just some negotiating that needs to be done. But yeah. Yeah. And it also will mean extra resources for everybody too. Which, I mean, who doesn't need more resources? Seriously. You never know when something... You know, it's better to have and not need. Are we doing a season wrap-up already? On episode 9? Even though we have one episode left? (laughs) I mean, it's not a bad idea. Since, you know, we got shoved off again... Dude. <laughs> I know he's going to listen to this after the words be like, I thought you weren't going to be mad at me. No, I'm really not mad. I'm not. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I get it. You're hanging out with friends that you haven't seen in a long time. Dear God. If I had a friend show up that I hadn't seen in a long time, yeah. Pfft, bye. My ass is going to that. <laughs> oh, one day I'm going to go to California on a Thursday. What are we going to do? I work Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> Have you in the same office with me during a podcast? That'd be pretty awesome. That would actually be really hey, cool. Kat, if I had any control over clickable links in the chat, believe me, that would not have been an issue for this long. I don't have that control. That is a Spreaker thing. Yeah. It is frustrating. Mm-hmm. But there are plans for the website. Um, Hopefully the web developer will go ahead and get caught up on the missing episodes that are there. Um, I definitely would... I still want to get the... Um, the uh, oh God, what's that, the transcription service. So we could get uh, transcriptions of all the episodes and put the text on the site. That way it's searchable. That way people who are hard of hearing can also enjoy our episodes. Um <laughs> Yeah. Plus, I mean, just that way, a... if you want to count how many fart jokes we make in a season, no. <laughs> it'll be easier because you could just look up the word "fart" and it'll give you a good idea. <laughs> um, how many times have we mentioned bath, mentioned bodily functions? Mm. Yeah, we are mental. <laughs> yeah, we are mental. I, I think we should add a 
Vexy's murder boob tracker thing to the website. We can track how many times my boobs try to kill me. Yeah, and we should actually put up the uh, the name drop tracker. We did really yes. great this season. Awesome. Yeah. You ready? You ready? The the name counter name drop counter for season eight so far stands at two. Guest drops other. Yeah, I remember that one. Nobody else has dropped the name. We're learning. <laughs> hey. It's been a while since I've name dropped. I'm happy. Yeah. So, no, I mean, uh, I mean, obviously, I still want to do the app. But that's, I thought it was just going to be the $200. No, so much more than that. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> that's a ways off. I mean, we still uh... have to maintain. You okay? Mm-hmm. Flare up. Somebody needs another Charlie gummy. Horse. Charlie horse. <sighs> oh, so Aww. my dad decided it would be fun to teach my boy about wet willies. Oh no. He's four. Guess how often he decides that it's funny. Every time. All the time. Oh. All the minutes of the day. <laughs> yeah, no, there's still I have I have plans, things that I want to do, and it's just a matter of when we get there. There's some other people from my guild for um Shop Titans that I would really love to get on the show. Like some that I really want to get on the show. Been blessed to have a couple already. Uh oh. Cat doesn't know what a wet willy is. Guillermo Mojado. May was telling you what to do with the trolley horse. Heel to the ground, toe to the sky. Yes, it is. That's the way to do it. So a wet willy is when you get your finger wet and stick it in someone's ear. That's a wet willy. As you can tell, we really appreciate my dad teaching that to our son. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Thanks. I get it, you know, though. That... It's, it, grandparents are supposed to teach bad things forward to their grandkids. That's I, I think that's like a rite of passage for a granddad. You know what my grandpa taught me? Hmm. Well, when it's time when you want to take your jacket off because it's hot, just go up to someone and say, Jacket off. Yeah, jacket <laughs> off. Oh, when you step on ants, say damn ants as you do it. When you say goodbye. You say keep it in your knickers and don't let your meat loaf. Yeah. We wonder why you're a smartass. I don't know. With that kind of influence? I wonder. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, there was the most epic day of memory when my grandparents took my sister and me out for Belgian waffles a la mode. with milkshakes and then after we got our fill of ice cream and ice cream and syrup <laughs> and whipped cream mm -hmm. drop us back at my parents house and let us have a fucking meltdown <laughs> wow that day was terrible for me I remember that everybody was being a jerk <laughs> of course reality is I was being an absolute asshole Sugar crashing kid that perceived oh world as jerks. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I don't have it in me to do that to my, my, to my kid. Sweet Chivas. When they have when they have parties at Adam's day have. And he comes home so jacked up on pizza and sugar and all kinds of soda. 
and they give him the soda with the sugar in it, not the stuff that doesn't have sugar that I send him. Oh, no, and probably the stuff that's high in caffeine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he comes home jabbering 90 miles an hour, zipping through the living room back and forth, and I'm just like, I'm going to commit murder tonight <laughs> if this child it's like right, does not calm down. It's like, right now, this is cute and all, but when he crashes, someone needs to die. <laughs> Oh. Mm. When he's talking so fast, I can't even understand him. And he'll come in the room. Becky, Becky, Becky. What, Adam? And that's exactly what it sounds like. And you can't hear, you can't understand a word he's saying. And you're telling him, slow down. But Adam, go slow down. You're going to really slow. Why are you going so slow? You better hurry up. I can't jump with me. Exactly. You know why you're going so slow? You probably don't have enough vitamins. If you had some more vitamins, you wouldn't be so slow. Pew! <laughs> Off the well, wall. you know. Uh, forgive me, I forgot to take my Vitamina Vegemin this morning. <laughs> Vitamina Vegemin. Great episode, by the way. Great episode. I yes, I know. It's rated as one of the greatest episodes of, uh, of I Love Lucy ever, but there's a reason for it, because it really is. <laughs> and I'm not going to play that whole, well... Because it was popular, I'm going to find a different one. No, fuck no, that was a great episode. It was so funny. Holy shit, she got drunk as a skunk off of that shit. Yeah, she did. And yes, the Chocolate Candy Factory was a brilliant episode, too. Yes, <laughs> it was. They were so ahead of their time. Like, the shit that they did is still funny to this day. Yeah. Wait, you mean the more beef I buy, the cheaper it gets per pound? Well, how much is a side of beef? <laughs> yeah. Mm. Do you happen to have a walk-in freezer? Because a side of beef is fucking huge. That's half a cow, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Even Kat was saying the best episode. <laughs> Vitamin to Benjamin. Oh, Grape Stomping was another good episode. <laughs> Oh, that was good, too. Did you ever see the news one where the lady was doing grape stomping and then she lost her balance? No, I don't think I ever saw that. It's classic. It was one of the... Oh, my God. It, was, it predates YouTube, and it went viral. She's wow. all sitting there stomping on the grapes. She's like, this is really fun. And she got really excited and went way too fast, slipped and fell out of the, the, the basket and fell onto the ground off the podium. And all you can hear afterwards is her go, oh, 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 Because she couldn't catch her breath. I mean, obviously she wasn't hurt. Just her pride. Mm-hmm. Because even afterwards she was laughing about it, like, the next day. She's like, yeah, God, I feel so dumb over that. I was like, okay, you know what? You're fine. It's just your ego that got bruised. You know, that's fine. But, damn, that fall. Uh-oh. What are you sending now? Just a joke. It it tickled my funny bone. <laughs> okay, you know what? Because we had to postpone the art and fun episode. <sighs> I'm glad we have the explicit thing on right now. Oh, yeah. Two men crashed their shopping carts into each other in a department store. The first fellow said, I'm sorry, I wasn't watching where I was going. I'm looking for my wife. The second man says, no problem, I'm looking for my wife too. What does your wife look like? First guy replies, well, she's 24, has long blonde hair, she's real tan, has long legs, she's wearing real tight white shorts, a tight white... Uh, tank top and no bra. Oh, thin tight white tank top and no bra. What's your wife look like? Second man says, doesn't matter. Let's look for your wife. <laughs> yeah, and that joke right there is why men are considered dogs, but you know what? That's exactly how it would go <laughs> for most guys. It's so funny. Except that he probably wouldn't be as blatant about, oh, it doesn't matter. Let's go look for your wife. It's like, you know what? I'm sure my wife's around. Your wife I'll is the one that's going yours. to be the one that needs to be found because guys are going to take advantage of that. 
See, that's how a guy would really do it. They'd try to be slick about it. Of course, one of the best jokes of all time. What's the last thing that goes through a bug's mind when it hits the windshield? His butt. Yep. (laughs) I can't read that. It's too small. It's Skeletor laughing, and it says, When someone tries to hurt your feelings, but you're dead inside and haven't been able to feel for years. (laughs) Yikes, that hits close to home. (laughs) (laughs) That's me when I was on Paxel. Oh, Oh, God. I am so glad I didn't know you in that. Oh, wow. You know what we should do is bring Ivania back on the podcast. And talk about what kind of an asshole I really was after my divorce. I almost lost her as a friend. I was that bad. This was back in the days of MySpace. And you know that song from uh, Beyonce? You know, the to the left, to the left. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah, she put that song on as her profile song. As a message to me. That, yeah, I'm replaceable. Mm. It got that close. Damn. I wouldn't know what life would be like without her. I got to talk to her today, so that was really nice. That's why she's on my mind. Aww. She's always been a really, really good friend. <sighs> ben the bestest of friends. <laughs> Oh, oh. No, no, no. I don't want to talk about that. I'm just looking for some kind of a meme or something. Don't want to have much else to talk about. I mean... Well, let's, let me share a little bit of the stats I found. Because, I mean, there's some cool shit to see here. So at this point, we have 3,570 total downloads... 517 total live plays, 247 likes, and 18 follows. The number one for listening to our podcast, as far as which platform is being used, Apple Podcast. By a lot. Very cool. Almost 71% of our listeners come from Apple Podcasts over the last 30 days. Goes a Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Spotify, GeoSavin, Firefox, Windows Media Player, Castbox, Alexa Media's Player, and Podcast Addict. Yeah, um, I already named off all the geolocations. I think you know Canada, United States, Ireland, mm-hmm. United Kingdom, Poland, Finland, Russia. Pakistan, India, Vietnam, Australia, New Zealand for just the last 30 days. If we look at, say, the last year, because unfortunately this doesn't go back to the beginning. (sighs) Wish it did. But no. I can only go back a year. So for the last year, wow, we've been listened to all over the place. Uh, United States, New Zealand, India, United Kingdom, Canada, Ireland, Australia, Germany, Russia, France, Sweden, Netherlands, Mexico, Israel, Pakistan, Norway, Philippines, Belgium, Taiwan, Finland, Saudi Arabia, Poland, Spain, Ukraine, Nigeria, and 11 others on top of that. Wow. Nice. Yeah. You guys know how to make us feel special. (laughs) We actually have Nigeria. It's got to be that prince. That one that wants to give us money. (laughs) I wonder if that's what that unsolicited DM was about the other day. (laughs) In the last year, we've had 2,090 downloads and 268 live plays. That's just the last year. Out of the 3,570, 2,090 came this year. In this last 365 days. That's amazing. Out of the 517 live plays, total, since we started, 286 this year alone. Wow. You guys are amazing. 
Like, seriously, you guys, you listeners, you guys are amazing. Yeah. I am absolutely speechless at that. It's... Wow. And Kat, actually, I remember Kat was first listening on iHeartRadio. There's a little bit of a delay between when we do an episode and when it shows up on iHeartRadio. But then I was like, Kat, why don't you come over to Spreaker? Now you can join the chat rooms and with us ever since. Yeah. Ow. Okay, and it looks like Kat and May are having an argument over who's special. Ladies, ladies. You're all special. And so are all you guys out there. Even those of you that don't have the time to come in and live, I get it. Life. Some people are busy at this time. Yeah, and it looks like Except for see, that person in Australia, you have no you have no excuse. You mean it's two it, in the afternoon. Not Australia. New Zealand. Auckland, New Zealand. New Zealand. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Now, there's the one in Australia who's coming on, but you know, they're they're working right now. It's Friday. <laughs> But yeah, C is getting tired, which I've kind of noticed. The eyelids are getting droopier and droopier. Yeah. So you know what? I think now would be a decent time to call it. Again, thank you, everybody. You guys are why we do this. <laughs> um, if this were just me and didn't have you guys listening, I probably would have quit by now. But I can't. Amazing. You guys give me, I mean, sometimes it's the reason I get up. It's like, I have a podcast to do. And that means a lot. You know it's you, babe. Whenever I get weary and I've had enough, feel like giving up. You know it's you, babe. Give me the courage and the strength I need. Please believe that it's true. Babe, I love you. Aww. That was for all of you, not not me. <laughs> now, if I was singing to E, it would have been, Because you're an asshole. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> And cats all E, you are special. Bexy is special. C is special. Oh, I'm special, all right. <laughs> I can attest to that. Damn it, C. <laughs> C's yawning. <laughs> Those things are contagious. <laughs> all right, so we will be back next week. With any luck, we will have that person on to talk about the importance of proper medication. Um, that will be the season finale. Then we'll take a little hiatus and we'll be back on March 10th to mark our third year starting then our three year anniversary of this podcast. Wow. See, you've been with us for over a year now. Wow. It doesn't feel like a year. No. It doesn't feel like two years. <laughs> you know? No, it, really it doesn't. doesn't. Of course, someone's going to like start listening to this this week and be like, at the end of the month, what do you mean two years? It's only been a month. Oh, I binged. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Until next week, I'm E. I'm Bexie. I'm C. You're making me exhausted. We'll catch you next and week. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.